<sighs> Hi. Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Silver Screen Show. Loving the energy there, Alenia. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm here all week because I've got nowhere else to go. <laughs> I am here with Chris, and we are reviewing Sound of Metal, um, another big film at the Oscars this year and just a quick overview um, a heavy metal drummer's life is thrown into free fall when he begins to lose his hearing it's directed by Darius Marder and stars Riz Ahmed Olivia Cook and Paul Ritchie so yeah that's top line that's exactly what it is um, Riz Ahmed and Olivia Cook are a couple slash band and they are on tour and um, Riz Ahmed starts to lose his hearing and it's very unfortunate because obviously he's a drummer, he's a musician and you know you hear a lot of stories about people still being able to kind of play through vibrations and things and being a drummer you might be able to but you know it's, it's also dangerous for themselves it could um, make his hearing even worse so he goes to this um, this kind of alter I'd call it like an alternative retreat for um deaf people and he starts to learn how to deal with his loss of hearing but he also still wants it to come back so that he can rejoin his band rejoin his girlfriend and we see his struggle through that and his development and his learning through that which is really beautiful um so i'm going to throw it over to chris what are your thoughts um, yes, it's an absolutely fascinating look at a um, world less seen um, in cinema. So um, a lot of the core of the story takes place, as you said, as a rehab centre for the profoundly deaf. And it's just a more general look at disability and how it can affect previously able-bodied people and how they need to come to terms with the fact that they may have lost a sense or some sort of physicality, but that doesn't diminish them as a person in any way. And in fact, he needs to learn that. He needs to learn that around other people who have the same sort of affliction and understanding that you can still have a full and complete life like that. And for someone who is, of course, a heavy metal drummer, this is a very, very bitter pill for him to take at this beginning. I mean, they even had it written on the board for um, Ruben, I believe his name is, um, learn how to be deaf. And that is a, really at the core of this story and how it changes his approach to the world. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I really enjoyed following his his uh, journey through that because as like I, I used to do a lot of music myself and I can't even imagine mm -hmm. the the depression that could come on from losing your hearing if, if especially that's not only your your passion and your your what you think you, what you might believe is your true calling in life but also it's your income it's it's how you're making a living it's how you're tra being able to travel around um, and it's something that he's also doing with his girlfriend. So that's also something that connects the two of them. And he's lost pretty much everything after losing his hearing and having to learn to live with it rather than trying to find a solution to it. They're two very different things. Mm -hmm. And he's having a really difficult time, like you said, at the beginning coming to terms with it and um, you know he's still kind of thinking about how he can raise money for the surgery to get his hearing back even though there's never he's never given a 100% guarantee that his hearing will return fully mm -hmm. but in his kind of in in his grief he's very deluded in that you know everything will just go back to normal um so did you have any um really outstanding positive points about the movie um well the sound editing and design of course has to be on point for a film like this and it's really interesting how they portray both his deafness and how it contrasts every now and again it suddenly shocks you and throws you back into how you would say someone with standard hearing would hear something compared to someone who was deaf and also, there are points where he goes through experiences and starts to hear things differently. And again, it captures it really well there as well. I, I would totally agree. I mean, it won Best Sound at the mm -hmm. Oscars, as uh, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was, it was like you say, the contrast between things are really interesting. So there, there'll be parts where 
everything's very muffled um, and things are very clear that contrast you'd expect that though from a film about someone losing their hearing it's very much like um, when I went to see um, what was the John Krasinski and um, Emily Blunt movie about um, A Quiet Place A Quiet Place thank you and you know how like silent it was it was so silent in the cinema that like someone eating popcorn everyone was like can you not um I, I imagine like if you saw Sound of Metal in, in the cinema, it would be very much like that. It would be dead silent in in the cinema as well. But it's also those moments where like the, the kid is tapping or they're like playing on the um, on the drums mm-hmm. or, or like on the slide and things where like he's going, he's moments where he's coming to terms with it mm-hmm. and, and he's more relaxed into it and he is, embracing the silence other other moments that really struck me and on top of on top of losing his hearing he's also a recovering addict Mm -hmm. so he's also going through that in in that he's been sober and you know all of a sudden he loses his hearing and he has a cigarette and that could possibly topple him back into drug use Mm -hmm. So not only does he have to come to terms with losing his hearing, he has to stay off. Uh, he has to stay sober as mm-hmm. well, which um, which is just added, adds another level, I think, to Riz Ahmed's um, portrayal of the character. Mm-hmm. I would absolutely agree with that, and I would absolutely have to say it is a magnificent performance from Riz Ahmed, who I've enjoyed greatly since Four Lions, and then he's done many great performances since, including um, Nightcrawler, and he just manages to completely, in many ways, transform himself from through every role. Um, it, was, it was in an understated way. I've never seen him as a massively overly energetic character necessarily, but in a way that kind of has a, has, has a quiet dignity to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also got to call out uh, Paul Rachey for a man- magnificent performance in which he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor, mm-hmm. which he shows the complexities of um, having a disability and also combining that with having prior issues with addiction. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. I think as soon as he was on screen, mm-hmm. I was interested in who he was and what he was going to be able to do and mm-hmm. and his ex- and just his experience. Like you mm-hmm. could see from his character portrayal that he also had been through a lot mm-hmm. and he'd been able to come to terms with everything and, and embrace the um, his disability, as you say. So yeah, no, definitely Paul Rachel was fantastic in the film as well. So um, we've praised it. Um, any negative points? Um, maybe you could shave five to ten minutes off his time at the rehab centre and wouldn't have missed a huge amount. It's slightly over long there, but they do cover a lot of interesting points. Yeah, I I'd agree. I think it um, it ran a little bit long in there. Um, I don't know what it is. I think like when I was watching it, I was I was involved and I I was present and I was watching it but there were at some points and I think it's probably to do with what you say like uh, the runtime within the rehab centre where I was I felt myself drifting out of it a little bit um, and I, I don't know what that is I don't know if that's me or or if it was the film but yeah some of there were some points where I didn't feel quite as gripped um, as I was for um, say like a promising young woman um, there is, there's definitely a, a skill in terms of directing and writing to still hold your attention in the silent parts. Mm-hmm. And in a film where we have a lot of silent bits, you really need to um, be able to do that. Mm-hmm. So overall, out of 10, what would you give Sound of Metal? Um, so I was still really, really impressed by it overall as, as a product and something that was just very much out of left field for me, learning about an area of life I really, really wasn't familiar with before, done in a very convincing way throughout with excellent performances and sound design and direction and pretty much everything else combined. Um, so I'm still going to give it a 9 out of 10. Give me a 9 out of 10. Okay, so I will give it um, an 8, purely because there were just some some of those bits where um, I was just slipping out a bit, a bit but... My, my opinion so um an average of 8.5 out of 10 for sound of metal so definitely a watch obviously um so any last points about the film chris 
Um, no, nothing that comes to mind um, other than I'd certainly recommend it. Okay, brilliant. So we will be back again soon with another episode of The Silver Screen Show. Thanks for joining.